we want to help the back and of course by helping the back we help the brain we'll help the eyes we'll help the ears in order to help the back we have to make sure that we're stable so for example sitting is very hard on the back that's why you see me sitting right now on a ball i will move from the ball to a stool for the exercise we'll do but the first thing see what i'm doing and do it yourself do you see how I'm moving my toes? I can move them forwards, I can move them backwards. And in fact, some people learn to use their toes as substitute to the fingers, unfortunately, because they were born with short arms or they have no arms. And they learn to use the toes in some substitute to the hands. I learned another thing which is very, very interesting. How much function affects structure? And that is, sometimes when a person had an accident and lost his or her thumb, experimentally, sometimes doctors would take the big toe and replace the thumb with the big toe. And within two years, the big toe would look like thumb. So function affects structure. We sit a lot, in fact, we sit too much. And we need real good leg support when we sit. But we also need leg support when we stand. And our support are our feet. So a few things most people cannot do. For example, walk only with their toes. The reason why I can do it is because of my poor vision in my childhood. People who are nearly blind or blind from young time in their life, learn to substitute seeing with feeling. Till this day, when I lift a client, they normally trust me, especially somebody with disability, like with paralysis, I normally lift them, put them in the table, when I have to take them to a pool, I take them to a pool, because they know that I feel my way. I don't really see my way, I want trip because I feel my way. So, uh, the ability to walk with the toes alone is very important. And again, people with a problem with the arms, short arms or no arms, often learn how to feed themselves with the toes. Most of us have no control over our toes. And yet, from the 200, and six bones that we have, 56 are in our feet. You probably could see that when you sit, you can move your toes. And yet most of you, when you stand, you have a hard time moving them. Why? Because we hardly ever use them. And we need to strengthen the legs. Again, if we strengthen the legs, it affects the rest of the body. So, for example, you can take your leg, bring it close to your hip, and move the big toe in rotating motion in both directions. Then you can hold the lower three toes and the big toe and move the second one in rotating motion in both directions. Hold the bottom and the top and move the third one in rotating motion in both directions. Hold the upper three and the lower toe and move the fourth one in rotating motion in both directions. Hold the bottom one, sorry, hold the upper four and use the bottom one in rotating motion and then tap on your leg. Do exactly the same thing with both legs. Move the big toe in rotating motion in both directions Move the second toe in rotating motion in both directions. Move the third one in rotating motion in both directions. Move the fourth one in rotating motion in both directions. And move the fifth one in rotating motion in both directions. Moving all ten toes can make such a very big difference and can help you stabilize yourself.
After working on your toes, you can see that the feet are more flexible. When we stand, real good exercise is to move the foot up and down while the heel is on the ground. And the reason is that we have such strong muscles here, they're called the tibialis anterior and the extensor digitorum. Those muscles support the posture. So many people, because we walk uh, on heels, even with shoes that don't have very high heels, just regular heels, we actually are very strong in being able to point the toes down like this, which is also good, but we don't have the strength to lift the foot this way. We also don't have the strength to rotate the foot as much as we need to. So many people have ankle cramps, twisted foot that leads to a lot of problems. It is the work with the feet that is going to stabilize your whole back. Because when the parts of the brain, they're called proprioceptors, understand that the muscles of your feet support you, your back becomes relaxed. Hi everyone. So, can you do to your socks what I do to my socks? Can you um, just get your foot out of your sock this way? Many people <laughs> think, well, that's a, such a special thing you can do. I want to tell you something. I'm not 66 yet. I'll be 66 on September 21. I'm so proud I got my driver's license for five more years, you know. That's after people tell me that I shouldn't walk in the street without a white cane and saying I don't. And I admonish my parents, my grandmother and all that. But I don't have back pain. I didn't have back pain a day in my life. I sometimes had a beginning of back pain and got rid of it. And the reason is that I run and walk just like today. I ran on the beach. Today was short. I was went to sleep a bit late, which I shouldn't have. But uh, I ran for a short run on the beach, on the sand. That definitely made my feet work much better. Uh, and it created this motion that I'm talking about. It makes you do this uh, dorsiflexion, they call it, or I'm put, putting my toes up. Uh, it makes you do the inversion and eversion. Not as much plantar flexion that most of us are doing as we walk with the toes uh, down and the feet up, and the heels up, sorry. So that does that. But the moment that your, that your uh, ankles have full mobility, few things happen. Because let's talk about the opposite uh, situation. If your toes are weak, and I've shown you that actually it's possible to move the toes one by one, the ankles become stiff. So all of you stand up and see what happens if you stiffen your ankles. So then the knees become stiff. And if the knees become stiff, so do the hips. The hip joints become stiff. And when the hip joints become stiff, so does the lower back. And that's when many people stiffen the lower back sometimes on purpose and wrongfully because most uh, educators tell us tighten your abdomen like six pack is a big deal well i can have people stand on my abdomen i had somebody who was third 30 333 pounds standing on my abdomen moving them up and down i have no problem but the abdomen should not work for the back that's what they teach you you lift something, tighten your abdomen. You lift weights, tighten your abdomen. That's the formula for arthritis. And then the uh, chest becomes tight and the middle back becomes tight. So let's start again. If your toes are weak, that's where it starts. And most of us have weak toes. I know from a uh, woman, when she was a girl, she had polio, myelitis. And she had a very wonderful masseur who begged her parents to not do all the surgeries they did for polio in that time, in the 50s. 
And he was so right. Instead, her mom got her to the beach and got her to lift pebbles with her toes. And lifting pebbles with her toes made a huge difference in her ability uh, to mobilize her toes. And it made a huge difference for her capacity to walk. She still limped and she still is limping, but she's doing so much better than most polio patients ever done. Partially because of using my method, but partially because of that wonderful masseur that taught her mother, get your daughter as paralyzed as she is to work with the toes. And she was less paralyzed than she could have been. Most problems are secondary problems. Most paralysis, and I've worked with hundreds of people with paralysis, uh, most of the situations in paralysis are secondary to the condition. You can have multiple sclerosis, but the stiffness in your hips is what's going to put you in your wheelchair. You could have muscular dystrophy, but stiffness in your body, uh, arching your back, that can get you to the wheelchair. So we have to start with the basics. And this is when the toes are strong and firm, when the muscles of the uh, foot are becoming balanced and the tibialis anterior, the front muscles work, then the whole thing is different. So let's start with the first exercise, which is a wonderful exercise, massaging your foot. You know, now because of the corona, I'm not flying anywhere, but anyone who knows me knows that <laughs> the airplane was my second home. I used to fly and fly and fly. And due to my level of income, always economy. You know what's economy, right? Uh, they used to have economy which, um, where people could sit and then they made seat for people without feet and later on people without knees or hip joints. And, and we all sit like in a group hug on, on the way in the plane. And if it is all the way to Europe from San Francisco or to South America from San Francisco uh, or... Um, uh, to Israel, huh, you come with stiff back often, but I don't, because the first thing that I do, and then the second thing I do a lot of massage with my, with my back, but the first thing that I do is I'm putting this ball, and if you have a tennis ball, please do that. If you don't have a tennis ball and you're willing to crush an orange or an apple, apple better, then do that, but I move the ball toe to heel and heel to toe. So I'm massaging the arch of my foot. And it affects my whole posture. Again, stiff ankles lead to stiff knees, lead to stiff hip joints. That's why so many people have hip joint replacement. Lead to stiff lower back that leads to also many digestive problems. Lead to stiff middle back that leads to heart and lung disease lead to stiff neck that could lead to eye problems, strokes, and many other problems, and lead to tight jaws, which leads to many, many dental problems. That's why we have to loosen up our ankle, and that affects our whole body. So again, toe to heel and heel to toe, middle toes to heel, heel to middle toe, little toe to heel, heel to little toe, from side to side underneath the toes, side to side in the middle of the foot, put pressure on your heel, and stand up and see if there's a difference. I see different colors between my two feet. I don't know if the camera can show it, but I definitely have two different colors, and I have much better color uh, in the foot that I was massaging. Let's do exactly the same thing on the other uh, leg. So toe to heel and heel to toe. It's so important. You cannot loosen up your neck without loosening up your ankle. It doesn't ever work. So toe to heel and heel to toe. Middle of the toes to heel and heel to the middle of the toes. Little toe to heel and heel to little toe. From side to side, underneath the toes, side to side in the middle of the foot, and put pressure on the heel. And it is such an important thing. When I walk in the park, I already have shoes and I would not walk with them anywhere else because they're so dirty. But I walk on gravel. I work on stone. I walk on grass. It is so important to walk on uneven surface. In this 
lifestyle that we have when we work with shoes on cement. That's how you injure your knees. That's how I once injured mine. That's how you injure your ankles. This is a good way to relieve yourself from all this tension. So I will not repeat the work on the toes. It frustrates so many people. I remember once lecturing a group of physical therapists about child paralysis. And I said, before I teach you about child paralysis, learn your own. And all of them realized they cannot move their toes one by one so easily. But the truth is we have those muscles. We're just not connected to them. And that's the problem that we have. So we need to move the toes one by one. We need to also do this exercise of lifting the uh, uh, feet, keeping the heels on the ground, and strengthening our shin muscles. So important. And then lifting the ankles to loosen up. So let's just work on it. Let's about 50 times each uh, foot. You lift just the toes and the rest of the foot and keep the heels on the ground. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Enjoy the pain. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Enjoy the pain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. Now I understand that some of you curse at me because there's a lot of pain. No problem. You reduce the pain by doing the opposite. Lift the heels up. You see, it's always when you contract a muscle, you stretch it by contracting its opponent. I think that 90% of you know that. So let's just do that and, and bounce on your legs. You know, by the way, it's so good for osteoporosis. If we bounce on our legs and rattle our whole body, I mean, the neighbors below don't like it. If you live in an apartment, but don't care, just do it. And we can also lift our arms a little bit and relax and now move your hips in rotating motion a bit. And that affects your foot because you can pay attention. So we can do this exercise of, uh, first of all, moving the hips in rotating motion, moving the feet in rotating motion. You know, people who do reflexology believe that pressing on different part of the feet affects the whole body. I don't understand them up too well. I believe in it. I don't really understand it, but I do know that they're right about one thing for sure, that working on the foot affects your whole posture and working on the muscles of the feet affects everything that you have. And so I think it's so important for us to loosen up and strengthen the muscles of the feet or else, no matter what you're going to do with your body, you're not going to loosen it up. So you understand that if somebody comes to me with a neck pain, I work on many other parts of the body, but eventually we have to get to the feet because if you're not loosening up the feet and strengthening up the feet, there is a sense in an area in the brain which is called the proprioceptors, which is in the parietal lobe, in the top of the head, that there is no support for the rest of the body. So everything will tighten. That's why it doesn't make sense to me that you're just gonna make a, an adjustment to the body or massage the body and that actually it will hold in any way. That is if the feet are not flexible and strong enough to hold you. And how could they be flexible and strong? We're not climbing mountains. We're not walking an uneven surface. Everywhere we walk is so even and eventually it leads to many, many problems. Uh, so let's move from the feet to the hands. So I think it's a very important thing that I convey to you that working on the foot is so important. Walking an uneven surface is so important. So any one of you has a park near you. I mean, I must say the nicest thing about where I live, uh, you know, everywhere is hot right now. San Francisco, especially in the outer sunset, is cold. Uh, it's a blessing comparing to some places on how hot they are. But what's nice about San Francisco uh, and where I live is the Golden Gate Park. 
walking there is so wonderful. The distance are so nice. It almost feels like a nice orchard or maybe even a little forest when you walk there. And I do it daily, uh, almost these days. And also the beaches are so wonderful near our school, near my home. And the unevenness is what prevented me from having back pain in spite of sitting in tight seats in airplane, sometimes for 10 or 15 hours. So this is what's so important that we're very sedentary and that when we walk, we walk on rigid surfaces and we have to find a way to not do that. Now, let's talk about neck pain. Why do we have neck pain? Well, there are many reasons, quite a few reasons. But one of them is stiffness of our fingers. You know, we learn to write with tensing our fingers from first grade. When little Pedro or little Johnny was told, hold the pencil tight so you can draw and the pencil down doesn't fall from your hand. All of you try to hold a pencil tight in the air. You can feel that the arm gets tight, the elbow gets tight, the shoulder gets tight, the neck gets tight. And so everything gets tight and we're really flexing vigorously our fingers. We don't extend them so much. So let's for one minute extend our fingers. I will um, take a look at the time. Rosando, maybe you can give me a cue when the minute is over. Okay, let me set it up in a second. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So you stretch the fingers and you try to separate between them and we're doing it for a whole minute. And you breathe deeply and slowly, slowly and deeply. And you can see that extending them is not as easy as flexing them because we're so unused to extend them. You know, in the past, author wrote with feather and quill, not even one report of author cramp. These days, there are so many people who use the computer and uh, a third of the workforce has cramp in their hands. Why? Because we are tensing the shoulders whenever we use our hands. So I'll do the opposite. Is it a minute? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, my apology for the strain I caused you to have. Now let's start and work on the fingers the way we worked on the toes. Move your thumb in rotating motion in both directions. And stretch the thumb because it's always easier to move after you stretch and move it in rotating motion. Move your index in rotating motion in both directions. And you stretch it and you move it in rotating motion. Move your middle finger in rotating motion in both directions. Stretch and move it in rotating motion. This is the hardest. To move the fourth finger is the toughest, the ring finger. Musicians can do it. I heard the joke that the difference between somebody who can move his fourth finger and somebody who can, the one who can move the fourth finger can play the cello. And the one who can't has to buy a ticket to hear that person. So now we're moving the fourth in rotating motion and the fifth in rotating motion. Both directions, stretch and move it. Now we can stretch all the fingers. So if I move, first of all, my left hand, I put my right and I really stretch my wrist and top. I'll do the same. Now feel the difference between the two hands. And now let's do the same thing in this one. Move the thumb in rotating motion. Move and move the uh, thumb and move the uh, Index. Index in rotating motion, stretch it and move it. Move the middle one in rotating motion, stretch it and move it. Move the fourth one in rotating motion, stretch it and move it. And move the fifth one in rotating motion. And now you can stretch both hands and move them in rotating motion in both directions. And you can stand and move them in rotating motion in both directions. So um, I will want next time to work on our shoulders. And there's no way to work on the shoulders without working on the hands first. And there's no way to work on the back 
without working on the feet first. We really have a short session today and we definitely can do many more exercises. But start with the simple one I've shown you. And let me just show you once more. You can actually move the toes one by one. I'm holding four toes and I'm moving the big one in rotating motion. I'm holding the big one, I'm holding the lower three. I'm moving the second one in rotating motion. I'm holding the lower two, I'm holding the upper, I'm moving in rotating motion. I know it's tough, but not because you don't have the muscles, you never use them, no matter how many years you lived in your body. Okay, I'm holding the upper three, moving the fourth one in rotating motion. I'm holding the upper four, and moving the bottom one in rotating motion. And we can do exactly the same thing here. I'm holding the bottom four toes, I'm moving the big one in rotating motion. I'm holding the one above and I'm moving the second one in rotating motion. I'm holding the upper two, moving the middle one in rotating motion. And I'm holding the lower one, moving the fourth one in rotating motion. I'm holding the upper four and I'm moving the uh, small rotating motion. I'll do two things. Put your fingers between your toes and shake your foot. And again, put your fingers between your toes and shake your foot. It goes like this. The more movement in your body you're aware of, the more sensation there is in your body. The more sensation you have, the more movement you have. So example, many people have sore thumb. What do you do with that? You squeeze the area in, like you follow the radia, the radia bone, and you squeeze the beginning of that th sore thumb. And it may hurt, but it's worth it. The thumb then is much less sore. You sometimes have sore index. So you go with the radia and you squeeze near the elbow, pretty strong. You feel your third finger and you go again between the radia and the ulna and you squeeze the top, you press on it. It hurts, but it's worth it. You take the fourth one, and you go near the ulna, but not all the way, and you squeeze this area. You take the little toe, and again, you go at the ulna, and at the top of it, you squeeze. And now you can feel the difference between the two hands, the one that you were hurting and the one you didn't. Same thing here. So you see massage or body work and movement are connected. It's not just lie down and enjoy yourself. It's lie down, get a massage so you can move better. And the same thing has to do with your body. When you do deep tissue, in this particular case, it's in order to create more movement. And that's why we did what we did with the ball, and we'll do it once more before my session is over. That's why we do it here. And so um, I'm going to fold the chair, and we'll do once more uh, the work with the ball. So all of you can have the ball, please take it. And again, the purpose of this massage isn't simply to enjoy it or to hurt yourself or something. That's good too, but it is to take away the stress. That's why it's good sometimes to lie on tennis balls and you can do some work in that direction. My book, uh, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing is wonderful uh, ball exercises that you can lie on, you know, uh, and I would really suggest to all of you work with them. But I think that what's important is that you massage in order to move better. There are other reasons for massage, in order to feel more. And I remember, I'll never forget, there was one wonderful lady who I admired and loved and still love. And she um, was a very advanced Zen priest, but she had her two breasts removed. And she was depressed. And I was teaching her self-massage. And she said, Mayor, you're teaching me to love myself again. And she was then in her early 50s and she died in her mid 80s. And I really credit her, her insight that when she learned to massage herself, that she learned to accept herself more. So be patient and slowly you move from big toe to heel and heel to big toe. And you press along the way and you feel some pain. There's no big deal. Then from the middle of the foot to the heel, heel to the middle of the foot, 
little toe to heel, heel to little toe, from side to side underneath your toes, side to side in the middle of your foot, put pressure on your heel, and then move it in rotation. And again, we'll do exactly the same thing here. Toe to heel and heel to toe. And you know, I'm now teaching you, but you can uh, on your own at home, start to do it in a way that feels right to you. It doesn't have to be exactly what I teach you. Absolutely not. That's not my method. In my book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing, we have 600 exercises, foreign illustrations. Not that I expect you to do all of them, but not even in one year, but many attempts to see what works for you. So again, toe to heel and heel to toe, little toe, uh, uh, three toes to heel and heel to three toes, little toe to heel and heel to Mir, toe. Move a little bit back so you can see your feet a little bit. Thank you very much. All right there's good. That's better? Okay. Yeah. So big toe to heel and heel to toe, middle of the toes to heel and heel to middle of the toe, little toe to heel and heel to little toe, side to side underneath the toes, side to side in the middle of the foot, and put pressure on your heel. And I really think that in that I will wrap up our short session. I want to meet you every Thursday. And next Thursday we'll talk about shoulder relief. And we started today by working on the hands. Again, I like to remind you the fact that these days a third of the people who use the computer have all kinds of problems from uh, carpal tunnel syndrome uh, to uh, problem with the elbows. And it could all be prevented if our toe or fingers would be more agile and much of our neck pain would have been prevented with better fingers, but also with mobile toes. So I'm going to open right now the floor for questions and answers, and I'm eager to answer any question that you have. Well, so far nobody has raised their hand, but somebody wrote on the chat, I have one bunion on my right big toe. Any tips? Yeah, the tips for bunion is as follows. What you do, can people see me from here? Yeah? They can see you. Yeah. So what you do is, let's say you have bunion in your uh, side here. So you press and you press the bone inwards. So you, you, you pull it out. So first of all, you do the movement with the toes that we did. But second of all, you move out and you press the toe inwards. That makes a very big difference. Also, when you walk, try to walk sideways like this several times back and forth that's going to make a big difference what doctors often do is they cut the bone but the problem is the muscle so you can cut the bone to be more con convenient and sometimes that's what's advised mostly i don't advise that what more, more i more advise is push the bone a bit more to its place and live with it okay madhu batja please uh meet yourself and go ahead Hi, Mayor. Um, I want to know. By the way, nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. So I can't uh, move my toes on their own. So can I use my fingers to move them in rotating motion? Start with moving the fingers and then try to move them even though you don't succeed to move them. Let me show you once more. If you sit on the chair, okay, and you try to move your toes one by one on the floor, you can do it, right? Yeah. So without gravity, you can do it. Without resistance, you can do it. So you have those muscles there all these years, and you didn't use them. You know, armless people often can feed themselves with the toes. Jimi Hendrix, the famous guitar guitarist, played guitar with his toes. So we actually can mobilize our toes. So start by moving them passively, no problem. But then attempt to move them, even with a little bit of resistance, in order to connect between your brain and a part of your body that never worked. And that will stabilize your whole spine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna ask a question from them and from the chat one by one. So Jan actually asked, how about numbness in the toes? Numbness in the toes has to be dealt with with hips because often numbness in the toes happens because tension of the hips. So, um, Two things. Number one, standing and uh, lifting your leg backwards this way is very helpful. 
Yeah. Second of all, um, working a bit with the calf. But third, if you have a yoga mat, I'll just lie on the carpet here, bending and straightening the legs like this is fantastic for numbness of the toes. Putting the feet together, rubbing them, and then moving the legs one by one from side to side. This way is good. That really helps the numbness quite a bit. But I think this is the best exercise to really loosen up the hips and it makes it easier for us. In fact, count about a thousand a day that you do this as long as it takes in order to bring more blood to the toes. And that helps the numbness quite a bit. Okay, now there's someone from the actual person talking. Chamsi, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, hello. Uh, I have, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's this, about the same question Madhu, the, the lady before asked, but I'm not sure. I can move really well with my toes because I do it a lot in Pilates and we do it with the balls and everything, but I cannot absolutely not do circles with my toes. Are we, uh, so I can do it with my hands? Yeah. You do resistance. I mean, even if the movement is almost not there, you know, I work, I, with, I work with a lot of paralysis. And one of the things that happens with many paralyzed situations is lack of contacts between the brain and the movement. So your toes are paralyzed out of lack of use. Yeah. And so, and, and it's hard for us to admit it. We're capable, we're mobile. How come we say we're paralyzed in some ways? Well, they're paralyzed because of lack of use. So even a little push and even a tiny insignificant movement means a lot to your whole body. Means you're loosening up your ankles because mm -hmm. they don't have to work as hard to hold the, the, the feet. See, the flesh of the feet is the muscles of the toes. If you okay. mobilize them even to the minuscule capacity, the ankles then move much better. So do it with your fingers, not, why not, but then do with some resistance and try to figure out that movement with your, with your toes. And as I'm saying again, walk on sand, walk on grass, walk on gravel. Try to avoid uh, as much as you can asphalt. It's going to make a big difference for you. Thank you. Okay, let's do one from the chat again. Uh, this is from Chris Selberg. Uh, my toe next to the big toe crosses to the left to the big toe. Do you suggest a lot of rotation of that toes? And stretch. And stretch. Okay. Rotation and stretch. As I've shown, you stretch, you massage, and yeah, you create rotation. But also, rotating the other toes could help the specific cross that you have, which shows that part of your muscles are very weak and part are very tight. Okay. Now, um, El Elma, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, um, I have plantar fasciitis, Meyer. What can I do about it? Well, first of all, you understand that uh, to a great extent, you have a lot of inflammation. So I would, uh, first of all, put my foot in warm bath and move it in rotating motion in a cold bath and move it in rotating motion. And then I would really massage the leg a lot. And I would also work a lot on my hip joints because when you work on the hip, more muscles and you know, you can do belly dancing all day long. And the movement that I've shown on the floor a couple of minutes ago, that can bring much more blood to your feet and getting a good massage in your calf, in your shin, you can either massage yourself by, by squeezing it. You can get somebody else to massage you. So uh, the more you, you massage this area, the more blood you bring to the feet and the more you take away the inflammation and the less pain you're gonna have. The last thing in the world you want to have is a surgery. Right, right. You mean cold and warm alternate at one time or? Start with hot and finish with cold. Okay, good, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Let's do one more from the chat. Uh, this is from Onir. Can we ask questions on um, running on pavement? What is the best way? Barefoot shoes? Question mark. Well, if you run off on pavement, of course, with shoes and soft one is good. 
And uh, because you don't have a given pavement, pavement, which I have on this carpet, which I have on the sand on the beach, then heel to toe. And best is to also run backwards, toe to heel, and to walk sometimes sideways like this, and to run sideways, it's also a good idea, to kind of create balance so you don't ruin your joints. I mean, so many athletes are arthritic. That's, uh, and they, they always say, well, it was this injury or that injury, but it's the stiffness of being on cement all the time. It makes a big difference. Cool, okay. Um, Diana Delgado, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, hello, Meyer. Hi. Hi, again. <laughs> um, thank you for the answer of the banyan because I have a banyan on my right uh, feet. Uh, food, sorry. And I would like to ask you if it's good, uh, a good exercise to stand on your toes and to low down. You know, I tend to do like an escalator. Sure, it's, it's a great exercise. It's a great exercise. But good. you still need to do the stretch and the push on the body. Okay, because you yeah. know, I dance. It's, it's, I dance, and, and generally we, we do this, this bit like this with pirouettes. And sometimes it's it's painful, really. But if you dance, always do the opposite of what you do in your dancing. So if you find yourself dancing and pointing like this, yes, also do this at home. Oh, oh so good. anytime, anytime there's any movement, I also suggest anybody who does yoga classes, if there is one form of posture, do the opposite at home because otherwise it's an imbalance. And the key word for strength of the system is balance. More Good. important than extra strong muscles, more important than anything else, balance. Good, okay, thank you so much, Maya. My thank pleasure. You. Okay, we have two more questions left. I'm sorry if I butcher your name, but um, Feliz Tuntuntu, go ahead and uh, ask your question, sorry about that. Feliz it's fine, I'm, I'm used to it. Hi, hi, Mayor. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you very much for this amazing session. I was wondering, I mean, um, as a person sitting on a computer all day long and working on a computer, may, many of us probably have the same uh, problem. Um, I heard that sitting is the worst thing we could do probably for our bodies these days. Hold but on, we sit hold on. Long Why is your hair on your eye? Um, there you I go. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. You. you destroy your periphery this way. You have to have openness. The glasses are not tied. You don't need hair. <laughs> you don't have to tie it, but just be aware of it. Take it. I mean, look, I shouldn't talk to you because I don't have any hair here, yeah? but uh, the point is, I don't want your hair to disturb your vision. Yeah, it's normally not like, not like that. <laughs> anyway, my question is about the treadmill desks. I've just found out about these um, new trendy tool for people like us. So there's a treadmill and there's a like an elevated desk that you can walk and then work at the same time. So I was wondering what your take on that would be. I'm all for changes. So standing and walking and working at the same time is good. Sitting with ergonomics where your knees will be supported instead of your back. Sitting with different back support. Uh, having uh, uh, the treadmill walk. There is no one way. Everything will tire you. As you know, when I talk about vision, the first thing you do before working on the computer, you look six minutes at the distance and wave your hands to the side in order to rest your eyes from needing to look at that computer. <laughs> After every two hours, you owe it to yourself to leave the computer, look at a distance. And I would suggest without glasses, not trying to see it, but looking at it. I think this- Yeah, yeah I, do, I do that, but pay perhaps for the back and the, the, um, right. the posture. Every, every 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, you stand and you stretch like this. But mm -hmm. your question is with the trade meal, um, station solve everything no it's good to do it in different manners so the answer is do it but then also allow yourself to have a chair that you can sit as well allow right. yourself in every different ways to change i also believe in changing by the way two or three pairs of shoes a day and to be also without shoes it makes a big difference and by the way it makes difference for your neck when you look at the computer thank you very much okay, okay.
And then we have one more question from Low Live on our iPhone. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Low? Uh, maybe she just put her hand up for no reason. Okay. I would like to thank you all for being here. As I'm Aaron? saying, go ahead. Yes. Um, is the um, fun toe fungus, is that related to poor circulation or is that a systemic problem? Uh, look. In the, in the nail, in the nail bed. Right. Good circulation can definitely help it. Um, and moving of the toes can definitely make a big difference for the fungus. But there is some, something about the fungus which has nothing to do with your circulation, just that the white blood cells can definitely affect it to the best. Okay? Okay, well, thank you. I'm calling this meeting off, but next Thursday, we're working on loosening up our shoulders. My big recommendation for you is work with my book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. Uh, you can get it from us, you can get it from Amazon, you can get it in Kindle. I would recommend you get a real good copy with all the illustrations in it and do everything that I'm describing on the shoulders in the joint chapter and the back chapter. It will make a big difference. Thank you very much, everybody.